Blood transfusion is a common medical procedure and just like any medical procedure it is important to explain it to the patient beforehand in a way that the patient would understand and obtain informed consent. Here is a doctor patient conversation before blood transfusion as an introduction to this video. Hello sir, how are you feeling? Hello doctor, I'm feeling a bit weak. Okay, you need a blood transfusion as your body is not making blood properly at the moment. That's why you're feeling weak. A blood transfusion is a procedure in which we take blood from another healthy person who has the same blood type as yours and introduce it into your body through a vein in the arm. It is a very common and safe procedure and it would help you feel better. Do you agree to getting this procedure done? Yes, doctor. Okay, please sign this consent form for me. The blood can be a donor's blood from a blood bank or the recipient's blood in autologous transfusion such as reinfusion or preoperative blood salvage techniques. The aim of transfusion is to compensate the circulating volume of red blood cells and to maintain the normal blood oxygen content in anemia. Blood transfusions are very important in medicine as they can be used to replace blood that is lost during surgeries, injuries, bleeding disorders or provided if a patient's body is not making it properly due to a disease. Indications for blood transfusion include severe anemia when the oxygen capacity of the blood compromises major organs, severe blood loss, anemia of chronic disorders such as renal failure and cancer, hemoglobinopathy such as sickle cell disease and thalassemia. There are some contraindications to blood transfusion even with compatible blood. This includes patients with megaloblastic anemia and vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. In these patients, transfusion may cause heart failure and death, and also iron deficiency anemia. We need to do some compulsory tests before the blood transfusion. These are ABO blood typing, determining Rh factor, assessment of suitability of the blood for transfusion, biological compatibility testing, and biological test. Now we will look at these tests in detail. Here we can see ABO blood typing as well as Rh determination. A blood typing sample well is kept on a white surface. Two drops of each reagent, in this case NTA, NTB, and NTD are put into their allocated wells and one drop of blood is put in each well. The contents of each well are mixed with a small stick or rod and a different one is used for each to avoid cross-contamination. The results are checked after 5 minutes. In the first result, we can see agglutination in the A well and D well. This means it is A positive. In the second result, we can see agglutination in the A-well only. This means it is A-negative. In the third result, we can see agglutination in the B-well and D-well. This means it is B-positive. In the fourth result, we can see agglutination in the B-well only. This means it is B-negative. In the fifth result, we can see agglutination in all the wells. This means it is A-B-positive. In the sixth result, we can see agglutination in the A and B wells. This means it is AB negative. In the seventh result, we can see agglutination in the D well only. This means it is O positive. In the eighth result, there is no agglutination in any of the wells. This means it is O negative. In assessment of suitability of the blood for transfusion, the tightness of packing and correct certification are usually checked by the doctor providing blood transfusion. The quality of blood or blood components is macroscopically evaluated. To make sure the blood is suitable for transfusion, it is necessary to ensure sufficient lighting at the place of storage and prevent shaking. The criteria of suitability for whole blood includes plasma transparency, uniformity of the top layer of red blood cells, and the presence of a clear boundary between the plasma and red blood cells. 
The criteria of suitability for fresh frozen plasma includes transparency at room temperature. When bacterial contamination occurs, the color of plasma turns dull with a gray-brown shade, loses its transparency, and suspended particles in the form of flakes appear. Such medium is not suitable for transfusion. It is forbidden to transfuse blood components without testing them for HIV, hepatitis B and C, and syphilis. Next is biological compatibility testing. At room temperature, two to three drops of the recipient serum are placed on the plate and a small amount of erythrocytes is added in such a way that the ratio of erythrocytes and serum is 1 to 10. The erythrocytes are stirred with the serum and the plate is rocked gently for 5 minutes while watching the progress of the reaction. The presence of agglutination of erythrocytes means that the donor's blood is incompatible with the blood of the recipient and it should not be transfused. If there is no agglutination, it is evidence of compatibility and the transfusion can be done. The last test is the biological test. Before doing this test, the container with transfusion medium should be kept at room temperature for 30 minutes or warmed on a water bath at the temperature of 37 degrees Celsius under thermometer control. 10 ml of blood transfusion medium is infused at the rate of 2 to 3 ml per minute, then the transfusion is stopped. The recipient is observed for 3 minutes. A physician must check pulse, respiration, blood pressure, general condition, skin color, and body temperature of the patient. This procedure is repeated twice more. If symptoms such as chills, back pain, burning sensation, and tightness in the chest, headache, nausea, or vomiting is noticed, the transfusion must be stopped immediately.